I'm here with Dr. Prash Sanders from University of Adelaide, and we're so happy to have you on Heart Rhythm TV. Thanks, Kevin. So I want to ask you a couple of questions. You've really studied more than anyone else, uh, you know, things that have going to revolutionize the way we think about atrial fibrillation. Tell us a little bit about the role diet and exercise plays in the treatment and prevention of AFib. Yeah, so I mean, one of the important things that we've found is that AF keeps going. And even though we stop AF by ablation, when we've looked at the atria, the atria continues to be damaged. And so the question is, why is that the case? And why do we have recurrence of arrhythmia even after we've ablated this? And so when we start looking at this in a number of studies, it's becoming clear that lifestyle-related diseases are the key. Um, and each of these studies have shown, whether it's blood pressure, whether it's obesity, whether it's sleep apnea, there is something that's associated with this progression of disease. And so that's where we've designed our studies in trying to look at how we can manage these risk factors to try and improve our outcomes. And, and what we've been able to show is really by managing people's risk factors tightly, improving their diet, getting them to exercise more, uh, controlling their blood pressure, treating their sleep apnea, we're able to improve our ability to maintain sinus rhythm. So I've heard about these specialty uh, counseling clinics that you guys have at the University of Adelaide where you really intensively treat patients uh, for their body weight, help them with weight reduction and diet and manage their diabetes and their hypertension. What do these clinics involve and how labor intensive are they? Yeah, so look, it is an intensive clinic. It is, however, a single physician with a single patient. We don't really have anyone else involved in this clinic. And so it's getting to know the person, getting to know the motivation for change in that one individual, and then working with that individual to make decisions about treatment targets, achievable treatment targets, because there's no point giving someone something that seems unachievable, that's a sure way to lose the attention of the patient. But rather, an achievable target means not only do they achieve it, but it gives them positive feedback to keep going. And so that's a crucial element. And by reviewing this process and gradually making changes, we actually create habitual change that the person can then maintain long term. Well, that sounds great. Thank you so much for taking time for us here at Heart Rhythm. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, Kevin.